All right, folks, welcome back to AWS Simplified. And today we're going to be talking about DynamoDB and how to choose the right partition key. So this is something that I think a lot of developers struggle with, and it's mostly just due to the sheer volume of information that the Dynamo documentation throws at you. So my intention here is to make this much simpler for you to understand. So let's get right into it. So of course, let's quickly talk about why picking the right key is important. So firstly, picking a certain type of key or key combination can actually limit the types of queries you can perform on your table. So if you're designing a table for the long term, it's important to be aware of the implications of choosing one schema over the other. And secondly, what I believe is the most important reason why you should care is the possibility of throttling. So throttling is when Dynamo will reject your request due to not having enough provisioned resources. Uh, specifically, throttling occurs on a table when the amount of resources you're trying to use exceeds the amount that you have provisioned on the table. And it can also occur if you have a bad table design that's conducive to hot partitions. And I'll explain that a little bit more in the coming slides. Okay, so before we get into choosing a schema, we need to define a couple terms here. Uh, so in DynamoDB, there's a couple of them. There's a primary key, partition key, sort key, range keys, a million different types of keys, and they all mean different things. Uh, so let's quickly define them. Uh, so we're looking at a table schema directly out of the DynamoDB developer guide here. Uh, so let's dissect this a bit. So in a Dynamo table, we will always have a primary key, right? Primary key is absolutely required. And generally, you have two options. Your primary key can consist of just a partition key, so just the partition key, or the combination of a partition key and a sort key, right? So in this case, our partition key could be account ID and our sort key can be this date, right? So those are the two options. So before we get into why you would wanna go with one or the other, let's quickly talk about what a partition key is and what a sort key is. So a partition key gets its name due to the inner workings of Dynamo. And the way Dynamo works internally is that it uses the key value as an input to its hashing function. So in this example, the key value here, if you went with this schema design, will be one, two, or three respectively for each row. And the output of this hashing function is a physical location on one of DynamoDB partitions. So then what's a partition? Well, a partition is simply a logical separation or group of machines that are hosting your data. Uh, for instance, if you have hundreds of GB of data in your table, Dynamo may create 10 or so partitions and will separate all your data across these partitions. And so when a query comes in for a particular key, Dynamo uses your key's value as the input to the hashing function and spits out the location of your record. And then it goes to grab it. So using this methodology, Dynamo can quickly know which partition your data is located on to go and find it really quickly. And that's how it gets some very, very high performance. So that's a partition and the role of the partition key. Um, so it's to define the location in which the row is located. So you can see in this example, if we have a partition key that's the account ID, the input to the hashing function would be one, and that may land on partition one over here. And this, this is a representation of maybe a group of machines. And similarly, for the row with ID two, it may land on partition two. And finally, um, the row with ID three may land again on partition one. Now a sort key is slightly different. By the way, another name for this is this, the range key. So if you hear that term, it's corresponding to the sort key and vice versa. And again, it gets its name from the inner workings of Dynamo. So if you choose to specify a sort key, Dynamo will store your records on partition, but in sorted order by your sort key. Now, when I say sorted order, I mean that on disk, Dynamo will have all the partition keys with the same values lined up right after another, and then sorted by the value of the sort key. And this behavior enables some interesting functionality with respect to queries that I'll talk about in a little bit. Now, when you specify the sort key, the combination of the partition key and the sort key must be globally unique. So in this example here, if we have an account ID as the partition key, the sort key, the combination of these two things must be globally unique. And that's what constitutes to your primary key, right? The unique, the combination of these two unique values. Now, if we look at this example here, we have two records with the same partition key. However, the sort key is different for each of them. So they are technically globally unique. So this fact has another interesting side effect. If only the combination must be unique, that means you're free to store keys with the same partition key, like what I just described. 
Now, if you choose to use the sort key, you'll be able to perform direct lookups on the partition key, but also specify filter-like parameters, such as get me all the account IDs with value two, and among those, between the dates of October 1st and October 3rd. So that's a query, a direct lookup on the partition that contains the value. And remember, these are direct lookups. DynamoDB knows exactly where these records are, so it can achieve very fast latency on these operations. And you're also gonna get more optimal usage of your provision capacity, as opposed to using something like a filter expression where Dynamo has to traverse over a number of records that it may not necessarily care about just to find the one that you're looking for. Okay. So again, we, we have multiple partitions when you're using the partition key and the sort key that doesn't really change. Uh, so let's say you pick a partition key and a sort key combination. Uh, there's an interesting side effect regarding throttling and provisioned resources that you should know about. So recall that if you're using a sort key, you have the option of storing multiple values with the same partition key. Like in the example I'm giving here, two is repeated twice. Uh, DynamoDB will store these two rows on the same physical partition. So let's just tease apart how this schema would possibly be stored on Dynamo. So the first record is one, the partition key is one, the sort key is this value, so that may land on partition one. Jumping down to value three, that may land again on partition one. And since these two values both have the same partition key, they will land on the same physical partition. Now recall when you provision read and write capacity on a DynamoDB table, it splits the allocated capacity across your partitions. So if you provision 400 total read capacity units and you have two partitions, each partition will be allocated with 200 capacity to use each, right? And that's what we're saying here. Partition one is 200 and partition two is 200. So let's say a burst of request comes in for account ID two. Half your capacity is pre-allocated to the partition that doesn't have that value on it. So partition one has half of the, per the provision capacity, whereas the value that you're actually looking for is over here on partition two, and it only has 200 capacity, despite the fact that you allocated 400 on your table. So say you have a burst of requests that are coming in for, for value two, um, and that exceeds 200 capacity, you have this extra capacity over here that can't help. So you're only gonna be able to use 200 capacity despite the fact that you have 400 that's provisioned on your table. Uh, so this can result in throttling where Dynamo will start rejecting your requests since it does not have enough free capacity to fulfill them. Um, so this scenario actually, it's not so much of a problem as it was, I would say about a year ago. Um, so this was a constant problem for many years when using Dynamo. Developers had to think of creative ways to distribute their rows across multiple partitions so that we can achieve optimal performance. So that's to say, somehow make it such that these two values are separated, so they're not on the same partition. So if the same situation would occur, the queries will be distributed across both of these two partitions. So this was typically a huge pain, often pretty cumbersome, difficult to change, it had a whole bunch of problems with it. Um, so as of May of 2019, DynamoDB quietly released a new feature that greatly mitigated this problem for, I would say, probably 99% of use cases. So the feature that it introduced is something that's called adaptive capacity. So in the example I just described, where partition two is being overburdened with requests, but partition one is sitting pretty, doing nothing, and it has a lot of capacity that it's not using, DynamoDB can borrow capacity from other partitions and apply it to your partition in distress. So in this example, again, so if we had 200 capacity that was being used because everyone was trying to look up key two and no one is trying to look up key one or three, if you're getting throttling on this side, Dynamo can say, hey, partition one, can I borrow some of the capacity from you so that I can fill these requests? And partition two can only borrow as much capacity as available on the other partitions. And keep in mind, there's a hard limit for this. So each partition can only have as much as 3000 read capacity units or 1000 write capacity units. So that's a hard limit on the amount that each partition can have. If you go over that, you're going to experience throttling and no amount of adaptive capacity can help you. So when should you use one or the other? Well, you start by asking yourself two pretty basic questions. And the first one is, are you always doing quick lookups of a known key? And is that key globally unique? And remember, that corresponds to the first example that I gave. 
So if you are always storing a globally unique partition key or a known maybe UUID or some kind of entity ID, and you're always going to know that value prior to performing your query or your get request, then it doesn't make sense to use a sort key. You don't actually need one. You're always going to be doing direct lookups. So sort keys don't matter. So don't bother yourself with that. So just use the partition key. And the second question is, is your key non-unique or do you want to do range-like queries based off some other value? By range-like queries, I mean all the things between these two dates, greater than or less than something, those kinds of queries. And recall that that's this example. So if you have duplicated values here, so two rows with the same partition key. And if that's the case, then you need to use a partition key and a sort key. Now for most people, you can pretty much stop there. However, if you have a very high throughput application, something you can foresee to have in the thousands of read or write capacity units, you may need to do some other homework. And that involves making sure that these values in some way are distributed across different partitions. So there's a couple methods to do this or a couple strategies. You can add known prefixes or suffixes to your partition keys so that when it comes time to look up, you may need to look up this value that's appended with a prefix or suffix. And what that'll do is ensure that all the value twos are distributed over different partitions for optimal look up performance. And another strategy is to use composed partition keys. So use account ID plus some other value plus some other value and make that that unique thing be your partition key. And again, that'll ensure that it's distributed over different partitions. And for the lazy people, um, DynamoDB Accelerator is a caching layer that you can add on top of your table. And that'll allow you to bypass some of the limits, specifically the 3000 read capacity limit on a single partition by adding a caching layer in front of your DynamoDB table. Uh, keep in mind, if you go with this option, there is additional overhead. The caching mechanism is backed by EC2 instances, so you will have to pay for those. And by the way, if you're finding yourself in this category where you need to pursue other strategies, there's a lot of detail here and a lot of articles that exist out in the wild. And I'm gonna leave a couple of them in the description below. You're gonna have to do a little bit more research on that. So that about wraps things up. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And if there's any topics you'd like me to cover or questions you might have, please feel free to leave me a message in the comments section below. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.